What is going on everybody and welcome to part 25 of our machine learning tutorial series. In this part we're talking about specifically the support vector machine. Up to this point we've covered the theory and the logic for how we're going to do it and now we're going to go ahead and do it. So we're not really going to be talking much about the theory and logic here so if you missed that you probably should go back and cover that. So anyway uh, let's go ahead and get started. First thing uh, we're going to get is we're going to go ahead and import matplotlib.pyplot as plt. We're going to go from matplotlib import style, style.use, and we'll use ggplot for this. It really doesn't matter. And then actually, we also need to import numpy as mp, and that's basically all we need for. Uh, at the beginning here. So now we're going to start with just some really simple basic data. So let's go ahead and make that. We'll call it data dict for now. And it's just going to be a dictionary. And the keys will be the class. So negative one is going to be the equivalent of a numpy array of a list of lists. And then we're going to do the same thing for a positive one class. It'll be a list of lists too. So uh, let's put a comma here. And so let's start adding some stuff here. So let's just say we got a one seven. And let me just paste, paste. So we got one seven, we'll do a two eight, and we'll do three eight. Just something really simple. And then we'll go ahead and enter this one. And if I recall, I can just paste like this. Yeah. And then we'll do five one. Let's do let's do six negative one. So let's throw like a negative in there just to show that. And then a seven, whoops, seven three. Okay, so very clearly it should be pretty obvious where that data is going on the graph. If if not, don't if that's not really that integral. Once we train it, we'll we'll plot it up and stuff, but I don't want to waste time doing that right now. So now uh, what we're going to do is, I guess we'll probably, we'll just leave that and then we'll come down to the other stuff, the other parts. Like, cause like later on we'll actually call stuff to run, but we don't really have anything besides data dicks. So let's go ahead and begin building our, our support vector machine class. So if you don't totally understand object oriented programming in classes, don't really, I, hopefully this will be a simple enough class. Uh, just understand that the word self just allows us to use variables and other methods within the class. And what the heck is a method? A method is basically, it looks just like a function and it acts like a function and all that. So just think of it that way if, if you don't know much about object oriented programming. We definitely want to do it though because we want our support vector machine to be an object so we can train it and then not have to retrain it. And like later we can do a prediction and stuff like that or visualize or whatever. So that's why we want it to be an object, plus we want to save it. With k nearest neighbors, it wasn't as valuable to make it an object because every prediction needed to basically be a retrain, right? So it uh, wasn't really that valuable there. So anyway, we're going to call this a class support vector machine. And actually, we probably should be a totally official support vector machine. There we go. Now we're going to define our init. And again, I guess I didn't explain in it either, but basically all the methods within a class, when you call a class to run, all the method, none of the methods will run except for the init method. This is the initialization method. So when you first call support vector machine into action, the init method just will run. So anything you define under there is going to happen. And then the other stuff will only happen if you specifically uh, call upon it. So here we have self, and then we're going to set visualization equal to true. And what's going on here is uh, self, just for self, and then also visualization. Uh, we're going to have some code that's going to allow us to either graph the data or not. But if we if we if we want to be as high performance as possible, you wouldn't visualize it. But I just wanted to have it there because visualizing it is you know like we won't really know if it works unless we can see it with our eyeballs. So we're going to visualize it. So now what we're going to say is self dot visualization equals visualization. Okay, so that just says for the entire class, we're just setting that value to whatever the user said. And if the user didn't say anything, we're just assuming it's true. So we're going to visualize stuff. Next, we're going to do self dot colors. And we probably 
don't need this one here. We might put it in the visualization, but for now I'll put it here. And this will be, uh, if we are visualizing things, this is what we want. And B. So the class that is a one will be in red and the class that is a negative one will be blue. Next, what we're going to say is if self.visualization, uh, if that's the case, we were going to say self.fig for figure equals plt.figure. And then we're going to say self.axes is uh, self.fig.add underscore subplot 111. So if you don't know much about matplotlib, I've got a whole tutorial series on it, so you can check that out. Basically, this is just the, the actual figure to the whole window almost. And then this is a specific subplot, and then this is a one-by-one one grid, and this is plot number one. There is only one, but it's plot number one if there was one, <laughs> if there was more anyway. Anyway, so there we've got that, and we want that for reasons you'll see later on. And, and we need to share that across the entire method. So anyway, so you've got the init. And then what we're going to need to do is eventually have, well, what else do we need? So we're definitely going to need, just think about like with scikit-learn, what do we have? We've got uh, fit and predict for sure. So let's go ahead and just define fit. What, uh, we're going to have to have self there just so we can share variables and stuff. But then what else are we going to need? And really it's more for standards, but anyway. What else are we going to need? Like, what are we doing when we do fitment? Well, we're passing data. So we're going to throw in data there. And for now, I'm just going to say pass. We're not going to do anything else. And then finally, what is the other method that we're really going to need? Well, we're definitely going to need a predict. And that's, again, going to take self and data. And prediction, <clears throat> let's go ahead and we can actually fill out prediction for the most part. What is predict? Remember what what the function is or the calculation for the prediction is we have to, we basically, uh, the, it'll be classification equals something. And if you recall, it is the sign of the uh, X I, but for now we'll just, we'll just put X cause we can't really do a sub so easily in here. So X dot W plus B and it's whatever the sign is of this equation right here. So so what would in Python how would how might we do this, right? Well, first of all, for sign, you could you could have some sort of like quick lambda function or something that just says it is a is it above 0 or below 0, right? So you could do something like that, but it turns out numpy actually has a specific sign. So we're going to go ahead and just do that np.sign of np. Dot, so remember, this is x dot w and what does a dot product do it returns a scalar value so np dot dot and we're going to dot anything that we pass and whoops i actually let's see we did predict self data let's say predict self features that that makes a little more sense so let's do np dot dot and then we would say we're going to dot the np dot array features and then it's just uh, in the in the dot. So this is the two things that we're going to dot. We've got the one thing so far. So we're going to have a comma. And then the other thing that we're going to dot, which will be self dot W. We don't have W yet. It's, we're going to have, that's the whole point of this entire thing. If you recall, we'll get there. But just remember um, that that's what it's going to be. So it's just X dot W and then plus B. So again, self dot B, same story. We don't have those yet. We need to optimize for those. But once we have them, we'll be able to do a prediction. Where do you think we're going to get these values? When are we going to set those? Well, hopefully in the fitment, right? <laughs> we can't find those values until we do a fit. Therefore, of course, you have to do a fit first. And just for uh, the sake of clarity, it should be pretty clear by now, but fitment is train. Okay. It's basically the same thing. We're just going to use fit because that's what scikit-learn uses when they call it something. So anyways, um, we've got self W, self B. So that's it. That is your classification. And then basically you return classification. Now we're also going to graph and stuff like that, but we'll just leave this the way it is for now because, uh, and we'll, we'll plot it when we get to the visualization part. And I think for now I'll cut this here. And then in the next tutorial, 
we'll probably build out the entire fitment. So we'll cover the entire optimization and finding W and B, but you know, the true crux of the support vector machine now that we've got a decent amount built. So anyways, uh, that's it for now. If you have questions, comments, concerns up to this point, feel free to let me know. Otherwise, as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and subscriptions. And until next time.